we're going to see a lot of applications of the encoder decoder models. And for all these applications, we're trying to answer the following questions. What kind of network can we use to encode the input? In the previous application, what did we use? CNN. What kind of network can we use to decode the output? What did we use? RNN. What are the parameters of the model? We'll see that. And what is an appropriate loss function? So let's again go back to this task, which was image captioning. What is the input, what is the training data given to you? What is X, what is Y? X is the image, Y is the description, right? So this is what is given to you. You are given N such training pairs, where XI is the image and YI is the description. And YI in itself is a sequence, right? So you have YI1 to YI capital T. Everyone gets the input and the output. Now, what's the next thing? Model. Can you write down the model equations? I want an equation which starts from X and goes all the way up to Y. And since we have several time steps, I want an equation for YT, which is generic for every time step. Right? So can you write that equation? And feel free to use shortcuts. So you don't need to write the entire RNN equation, just say RNN of something. Don't even try to write the VGG16 CNN equations, just say CNN, okay? Okay, so we'll go ahead. The first thing that I'm going to do is, I'm going to write the equation for the encoder. So the encoder gives me CNN of XI, whatever is the input given to me, XI is the ith training image given to me. So I'll just pass it through CNN, I'll get a representation for that. And I'm just being cryptic here, it could be the FC7 representation or the CON5 representation or the max pool 5 representation or whatever you want, right? I'm just going to denote all of this as CNN of XI. Run the CNN, take whichever representation you want to take. Now what's the decoder going to be? Decoder is the following RNN. Remember the equation of RNN was ST minus 1 comma XT. What is the input at the T at time step? Whatever you had predicted at the previous time step, just the embedding of that. So E means embedding, if you want take one hot embedding, if you want take word to back embedding. Is that fine? Okay. And then what's the output? It's a softmax function of the following. How many of you get this? Now, please raise your hands. How many of you can say that y can be written as a function of x? Okay. Is that pretty straightforward? Okay. So you have an encoder, you have a decoder, and remember that this final y is a composite function of the original input x. Okay, it's just that you're doing too many computations along the way, but there is a path which exists. Okay. What's the loss function? Everyone at this point should be able to say it sum of cross entropies. They just wait for me to say two more sentences. What are the parameters? U, V, W, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, everything, right? What is there? All the parameters of the convolutional neural network. That means all the filters that you have. All the parameters of the RNN, which is W, U, and the parameters of the output layer, which is V, right? All of these. Is that fine? I'm, I may have missed some biases, but okay. The objective function, as you said, is a sum of cross entropies, where LT is the true character at time step, or true word at time step t. Okay. And what's the algorithm that you're going to use? Backpropagation through time, and it will backpropagate all the way through the CNN also. It's an end-to-end -end thing. In practice, of course, you don't do that. Yes. So you could just set both to be the same. Do you get that question? Is that okay? Okay. Now let's look another look at another task. We look at the task of textual entailment. What textual entailment does is that I give you a input or a premise. The premise is that it is raining outside and you need to tell me a hypothesis. The hypothesis is that the ground is wet. Okay. It basically means that it is raining outside implies that the ground is wet. Okay. Now what's the encoder decoder architecture that you'll use for this problem? What's the input here? A sequence. What's the output? Sequence. It's all the hint that I'm going to give you. So what will you do? What's the encoder equation going to be? RNN. What's the decoder equation going to be? RNN. How will it become end to end? By setting what to what? S0 of the decoder to, to what of the encoder? Last time step of the encoder. How many of you get that? Really we are on the same page? First time in I don't know how many lectures, but finally it happened. So here's what your training data is, right? It's a collection of premises and hypotheses, and you have n of these. 
there are two options for the model. The first option is that you encode the input using an RNN. Feel free to replace it by an LSTM if you want. Then you have the decoder wherein you set the zero time step to whatever you got from the encoder. Then every time step you computed using the RNN where remember the input at every time step is whatever you predicted at the previous time step and then the output is just the softmax function. Is that fine? And what is the loss function going to be? Loss function sum of cross entropies. Training algorithm back propagation through time and really through time right and all the way back ok. So, we will see that. Uh, let me see if I had any other question uh -huh, ok ok I will ask it the parameters I am not going to bother about ok. Now, this was option 1 as is clearly written what is option 2 what do the sec set of equations look like for option 2 which of these equations will change and how. Remember option 2 was where we pass the input at every time step which equation will change st what will it become but st can take only I mean RNN can take only 2 inputs right st minus 1 you need to give embedding you need to give. So, how will you fit in the third input so this animation has its own mind. So, this is how back propagation will happen right. So, let us just finish that. So, it will actually back propagate all the way back through time ok fine really all the way back through time and same task textual entailment I want model 2 option 2. So, this is what will happen you will just concatenate H capital T which is this guy along with the input at every time step right. How many if you get this? The RNN is still taking just two inputs one is the previous state the other is a concatenation of the current input as well as the input that you got from the encoder everyone gets this ok. So, this is model 2 and going forward I am not going to do both model 1 and model 2 it is model 2 is just a very simple variation of model 1 ok. A parameters loss function training algorithm everything remains the same ok. Let us look at machine translation what is the input an English sentence what is the output a Hindi sentence ok what is the encoder going to be RNN what is the decoder going to be RNN what is the loss function going to be soft soft max who said soft max ok what is the loss function going to be sum of cross entropies training algorithm all the way through time right ok. So, let us can you draw can you write the equations yes yeah, just copy it from the previous slide it actually copy it from the previous slide right. So, you have the RNN you have the RNN as a decoder again in option 1 you will set S0 to HT you have the loss function the parameters and your training algorithm ok and for option 2 oh it is back propagation will happen fine and for option 2 what will happen option 2 what will happen this will change right. So, just focus on that we just pass in the last time step along with that ok. Now, transliteration what is transliteration what is transliteration and if you do not know it at least see it from the example what is it writing the same word in another language right. So, this is typically done for named entities when you translate I mean when you are translating from one language to another you do not often for Thomas you do not come up with an Indian translation right you just say Thomas in Devanagari right you just write Thomas in Devanagari right. So, for names you typically just do a transliteration that means from the English script you just write it in the native language script ok what is the input one word the input is a word right what is it a sequence of characters what is the output a sequence of characters what will you use for the input RNN what for the output RNN it is all becoming too easy right can you write the equations for this yes you will copy it from the previous slide yes ok everything remains the same right. So, you see why this framework has become so powerful if you do not see it still maybe let us look at something else image question answering tell me what is the data here what is the input image and question and what is the answer or what is the output answer. So, for simplicity we are going to assume that the answer here is a finite vocabulary we are not generating descriptive answers we are not being overly dramatic we are just going to say one word what is the color white we are not going to write I think the color of the image is white no ok just white. So, all these outputs are going to be single words and we have V possibilities and we are going to predict one of those V possibilities ok. Now, give me a model for this now, now things are getting slightly complicated right you have 
one image as the input, one sequence as an input, and a dash as the output. Oh God! No, think. Why? Why would you generate a sequence of characters as the answer? I said that the answer is going to be come from a finite vocabulary. That means you need a a distribution, probability distribution as well. Okay, enough said. Now tell me what's the model? A model should connect the input to the output. You have two inputs here. I see some people doing this. I don't know what that means, but let's just do it. Let's make a train. Simple formula, simple recipe. Whatever input you are given, just encode it. Depending on the type of input, you know what the encoding is going to be. For images, what's the encoding? Sequences. Okay. Now, what do you do with these two separate things? Concatenate them. Okay. And then, after that, can you think of all the equations? Can you imagine all the equations along the way? Of course, yes. Right. I mean, <laughs> imagination. Or you can always do that. <laughs> I just think about it. Can you write the output as a function of the input, where the input is actually a pair now? It's image comma question. What's the model going to look like? Let's see. So model will first have an encoder for the image. Let's call that as H I hat. It's going to have an encoding of the question. Let's call it as H tilde. I'm going to concatenate these two, as someone rightly gestured. And then what am I going to do after that? Pass it through a feed forward network and predict a probability distribution. What are the parameters of this network? Parameters of the feed forward network, the parameters of the recurrent neural network, and the parameters of the CNN. Right? So everything that we have done so far in the course. Okay? How do you train it? Back propagate through time and space. Okay? Also go back to the image also. Fine? Is that okay? Okay. Document summarization. What is the input? Sequence. What's the output? RNN, RNN everywhere. Okay. Fine. I'll not even bother to ask you. Video captioning. Sequence of images. I want to hear the choice of phrasing that you use. I just want to hear that. I love hearing that every time. RNN of CNNs, whatever that means, but RNN of CNNs. Every time I do this, everyone says RNN of CNNs. I don't know what that means, but that's the right answer. What does it mean? What's a video? It's a sequence, but it's a sequence of images. So what will you do? Encode every image and then pass it through a RNN. Can you imagine the equations? Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, and in this case, what's the output again? A sequence. So what's the decoder going to be? RNN. Okay. So here's the model, right? So first, what you do is, for every time step, you compute the CNN encoding of the frame. Then you pass it through an RNN to get the final time step t. Okay. And then you feed it to a decoder and generate one word at a time. Is that fine? So this thing apparently is called RNN of CNNs. Okay. And so that's and the loss function would again be the same sum of cross entropies and back propagation through time and space. Okay, good. Please don't quote me on these things, although this is getting recorded. But okay, the next one video classification. What's the decoder? Decoder is probability distribution. Okay. What's the decoder? Feed forward neural network. Okay, this one. Dialogue. How are you? I'm not fine. Okay. Input, output. Right? So you see why this has become so popular? We took a wide range of problems, different modalities. Right? We took uh, images, we took videos, we took sequences, a combination of these. Right? Image question answering has a combination of images and sentences and at the output you have a probability distribution. All of this could be modeled by this unified end to end network. All of the components are neural network based components, whether it's a convolution network or a feed forward network or or a recurrent neural network, right? Now let me stretch this, right? What if you have video question answering? What's the input going to be? Sequence of images and sequence of words. The output is uh, no, just a word, right? We'll pick from a fixed vocabulary. How are you going to model the input? RNN for the question, RNN of CNN for the video, then concatenate and feed it to a feed forward network. Right? See all of these become to what extent that work is a separate question, but 
Earlier it was not even more possible to model all of this as an end to end network, right. But now it just becomes possible to model it as an end to end network with uh, all the components being neural components, right. And this is, the story is still not complete. Everything is not as easy as it looks. There is still a very, very crucial component that we are missing in the architectures that we have seen so far and we will talk about that soon, okay. The list just continues and I challenge you to do this. Pick up any problem, there are students from 11 different departments. Pick up any problem, or don't say that I want to design some gear for certain aeroplane and all that and I want a regional network to do that, no. Something which involves machine learning, right, not a problem which does not involve machine learning and see if you can model it using the encoder decoder framework, right? just try to do this. Take problem from biotech, right, for example, uh, given a sequence of genes and you want to predict whether this person is uh, susceptible to a certain disease, what will you do? Conduct a blood test, okay, do not do, <laughs> do not don't go into neural networks for that. But if you had to do that, this is what you will do, right, you will take a sequence, you will treat the sequence of, uh, sequence, uh, the, the given DNA as a sequence of genes and then you will try to predict something as the output, right, you will try to predict, predict a probability distribution over the diseases that are possible. So, you can think of many applications from many domains and all of that you could, problems involving machine learning, you could potentially model them using the neural encoder decoder architecture. But there is a very, very important part missing from this whole story which is attention, which is a very important idea and we will spend some time on it in the remainder of the lecture. So, we will first motivate why do we need attention and from there we will see that how do you make, how do you uh, integrate attention with all these encoder decoder architectures that you have seen so far, okay.